Hi, everybody. I'll just wait for a few people to get on. See if anybody's watching. Miss Ferry, hi, how are you? Record doggy. Oh, here they come. <laughs> that didn't take long. 100 people, 116 in that short few time, a little bit. As you know, yesterday I went to Prince Edward Island. Uh, that's my. It was my fifth visit. Seeing I got the pass that I can go over there, I thought I'd go over there and spend the day. And I, I really enjoy it over there. Uh, oh, there's somebody here wants to say hi. There she is. We'll just leave it on her, too. That's the Charlotte cat. Connor's upstairs. Uh, John Doe, what's happening? Well, that's the reason I'm on here all of a sudden. Um, I uh, had a visitor come here this morning, got me out of bed, and uh, I had no idea who he was. Uh, you know, big backpack on his back and uh, no mask on. And I, I, just, I wouldn't open the door. I just talked through the screen. And he said he came all the way from Germany to meet me. Well, I can't see that. First of all, I asked him, how did you get in the, how did you get in the country? He said, they let me in. Well, as far as I know, I don't think it's easy as that, but anyway, just something didn't jive about him. And uh, my neighbor noticed he was skulking around the property, and my neighbor went out and took a picture of him. So I just want to put a warning out there for anybody that's coming to my property that this is my home. This is not open house for, um, for strangers just coming from any country in the world. And uh, he had a a funny accent. I could hardly make him out. Um, and he talked very low to and half the things I couldn't make out what he said. So I said, well, you're going to have to excuse me. I'll come out and talk to you in a minute. So I went in. I had to get changed and cleaned up. And and uh, and when I walked out, I made sure my house was locked behind me. And uh, he was sitting on the grass there and he said, do you have any water? So I gave him a bottle of water. And uh, I said, why are you here? He said, well, I watch your videos and I want to, um, I wanted to meet you. I said, do you mean to tell me you, you flew here to, to Canada from Germany and how'd you get here? He said, he hitchhiked from Montreal to right to my door. And so anyway, we chatted back and forth for a little bit. And I said, well, you can't stay here. And uh, in Nova Scotia here, we are a high alert for the virus. you got to wear a mask. I made him put his mask on. And uh, after that, uh, I said, I'll drive you into town wherever you got to go. I said, well, I have, I have a meeting to attend to, which I did. I, have a, I had a meeting with my website guys. And... Uh, so I went, we went to the urban garage where I knew there was a bus that was in there and uh, they changed the site. They went to a petrol can garage. So I we went over there with them. And I went in and I asked uh, how much it was for Halifax. I think it was 37 something. And, uh, and it was leaving in an hour and a half. So I went out and I said, here's $50. I'm going to buy your ticket. The bus would be wait here for an hour and a half, and he was heading for Halifax. That was the last I seen of him. But uh, he said, um, well, they told me people here in Canada are kind and friendly. I said, well, might have been one time, but this is COVID days. And uh, you don't just walk up to a stranger's house and knock on the door and say, hi, how are you? He said, well, I was hoping you and I could have a coffee. I said, no, that's not happening. 
I don't know who you were. I said, for all I know, you could be a terrorist. Um, anyway, you're, uh, I'll, I'll give you a break and I'll, uh, I, I paid for your bus ticket. You get on the bus and you head to Halifax. What he's going to do there, I don't know. But he said, not my problem. So uh, apparently his sister told him not to come here. And he said, I was listening to the trolls. He said that you had money. And I said, I said, I don't have any money. I said, other people own my money. I said, uh, between the taxes and that, I said, I, that I pay, I said, I have some, st you know, some staff on the payroll. And, uh, but I said, as far as uh, being a millionaire, <laughs> this fellow here ain't that. That's for sure. Uh, anyway, I drove him to the bus station, dropped him off. And I said, now, uh, you can't come back here. I'll tell you that right now. But if you do, you'll be riding in a different kind of a vehicle. So anyway, just a warning out there to uh, people that are landing here in the country. I don't know if they're legally or how you're getting here or even coming from another province. You don't walk up to a stranger's house, knock on the door and say, uh, hi, how are you? I want to have a coffee. Uh, no, I don't. I don't want to have a coffee. And um, if it happens again, I'm going to notify the RCMP and have them uh, take you off my property. You're going to be arrested for trespassing. So I, I got to draw the line somewhere. I mean, this is my home. Um, I mean, I got to protect my home and, and these fellas here. And, uh, and you're coming here at nine o'clock in the morning and I'm here. I'm up half the night with the raccoons and I get dragged out of bed to the doorbell and this is what's waiting for me. I said, no, I'm not putting up with that. And uh, I don't have to. This is not a drop-in center. This is not a tourist attraction. This is a private home and this is my home. And uh, if I have to call the police every time somebody comes here, I will. Because, uh, I mean, I can't have people showing up here out of the blue. I don't know. I didn't know who this guy was. It made me quite nervous. You know, I didn't know what his motives were, but my neighbor was Johnny on the spot. He went over and he got pictures of him. Well, he was, he said he's, he was staying out the end of the road for the longest time. Then he came in, he was around my shed and, uh, and then he came up to the door. So anyway, you people that think they're coming to my house, my own friends don't come here unannounced. So why would I take in a stranger at all? off the street um, uh, I don't mind you know you, you send me a note on here or Facebook or something like that but uh, no I'm not going to drop what I got to do I mean I'm busy through the day I got you know I got uh, people I got to meet with I got uh, mail out some doing I mean what if he uh, if he showed up yesterday and I'm in Prince Edward Island and you know, the place is empty while my neighbor would make sure that, you know, because I told him I was leaving, so. And I let him know when I get back. But anyway, he was going to walk over, but he heard me talking to him, so then he stopped and listened for a little bit. So anyway, that's why I came on here, just to give people fair warning that uh, from now on, the police are going to be involved. I don't... Uh, I can't have people showing up here out of the blue. How old was he? I'd say he was uh, probably around 30. He had long hair and he had it tied back with a bun and it was coming down this way too. And great big backpack on him and he was looking for a place to shower that. I said, well, you're not showering here. That's out of the question. I'm not having somebody come in here and gonna use my washroom facilities. He can do that at the um, at the graduate was at. So anyway, um, <clears throat> it it was uh, it was scary. I was kind of concerned about it, but uh, but anyway, I I took him to the at least I was good enough. I gave him fifty bucks for a bus ticket and uh, and got him to the bus station. You know, I didn't have to do that, but 
uh, when I realized that he walked up here and the hitchhike, I don't know why how people picked him up because most people today are, are nervous about hitchhikers, especially here. But, uh, I mean, especially him, the way he was dressed and the long hair and everything. I'm not saying anything about long hair, but he, he was the type of guy that if I saw a hitchhiker on the side of the road, I wouldn't pick him up. But some people do, I guess. But anyway, I did I did all I could do for him. And uh, so I hope see people see this repeat. Um, they could uh, just uh, think about coming here in the future because I, I, um, I don't want you here. This is uh, this is my home and uh, and and I said and this he said oh you got very beautiful property I said this property was left to me by my late wife I said I didn't build this property she did and when anything happens to me it's going back to the family it's not uh, you know it's going back to her family that's the way we had it set up so anyway. But anyway, yes, uh, Missy Cat, I am. I'm going to get the police involved next time. Yeah. Yeah, I give him 50 bucks, and there was uh, enough left over for a drink and a sandwich because the, the ticket was only, uh, I think it was $33 for the ticket. So he, he could have the balance to grab a sandwich and a pop or something. But I didn't have to do that, so. But I won't see somebody left high and dry, even a stranger, you know. But I made sure if you want to go to Halifax, well, that's the place to be, not here. He said, I like this place. I like to live here. I said, well, you can't. I said, uh, you know, I said, there's no work for you around here. And, of course, when I'm driving in the garage, what's a big sign? We're hiring today in good wages. <laughs> that was on the sign at the garage. <clears throat> But um, I think he, and I, he had he showed me his passport. He had a passport there, but uh, and he had his inoculation uh, certificates there, where he was he had both inoculations because he he couldn't have gotten the country otherwise. I I can't see him being from Germany. He uh, he looked to me that he was um, more uh, like a, a Syrian descent or. Uh, Lebanon and like along those lines. So he certainly didn't look German. And his accent was the same as someone came over here from uh, from Lebanon or Syria. The, the accent was the same. Like the guy I talked to yesterday uh, at Brit's uh, Fish and Chips in Charlottetown, he was from Iran and he had a similar accent. So you pick it out pretty easy. Yeah, it was scary. I said to my neighbor, I said, we'll have to keep an eye out and, uh, you know, what's going on. Hey, Charlotte. Do you notice that she doesn't, she's not sleeping? She's keeping her eye on me? <laughs> she, did, she doesn't take her eyes off me. I don't know if it's... Uh, She's scared I'm going to go and cut that thing off her back or what? <clears throat> no, I, he, uh, he wasn't, uh, he wasn't threatening in any way. You know, I, I gave him that much. Well, there was no good threat to me. I was, I was twice his size. I weighed him by 125 pounds. But, uh, but I mean, I know how to, I still know how to handle myself. He was asking me, uh, are you still a policeman? I said, no, I'm retired. But I said, I haven't forgot anything I learned. <clears throat> yeah. Oh, yeah. She's a protection cat. She, she runs and hides. And Connor goes to the door and greets them. <laughs> Connor swing the door open and. Let everybody in. Yeah, in fact, uh, I got uh, 
security cameras coming Tuesday. They're being installed, and they are, um, I'll tell you what they do. They, they detect motion, and they zero in on that person, and they follow them all around everywhere. There she's gone. So anyway, that's how they're going to work. And but I have, I have motion uh, detectors out in the yard, and they ring, they ring inside the house, and uh, that's what that's what made me alert at the first. And I was just getting ready to get up, and then I heard the doorbell. So I was just, I just went to the door, and I only had my bathrobe on, and my hair was all over the place. You could tell I was just out of bed. I had a late night last night. Yeah, I got a good security system. It's uh, uh, you crack any window door in the house, and you're going to hear bells ringing and sirens and everything else. Same thing with the uh, with the shed. I had to I had to get everything all alarmed. And I got motion detectors. They're they're hid everywhere in the property. And uh, even if a bear, if it, like it, it won't detect the uh, the raccoons, but if a bear walks in the property, I'm going to know, or a human. But uh, we don't have it uh, low enough for the uh, for the raccoons. We because I I'd be up all night answering the uh, raccoons. So they they're coming back and forth all the time. Yeah. Yeah, I was thinking about getting spotlights here. Uh, I'm getting a new light put in on the pole there. Uh, the uh, I got to get a hold of the electric company. Uh, the people that we pay power to, they'll put a pole light out for me there, and it's on 20. Well, it, it comes on at night and goes off uh, daylight. It stays on all night. I had one there before. I don't know why I took it down, but I did. But anyway, I'll... Uh, I'll see to have it put back up again. Yeah. Yeah, this is the second visitor, uh, Evil Alex. Uh, this is the second visitor I had. Uh, the first guy was from, from uh, he was a local guy here. And he drove here. And, uh, and he came to the uh, 8 o'clock in the morning, he landed. And uh, he wanted to see the raccoons. I said... I didn't open the door. I said, raccoons, I said, they they come out at night, not in the middle of the day. They're all gone to bed. And he wanted to offer me uh, $100 to go to. I said, no, you keep your money, but you can get in your truck and keep on going and don't come back. And he didn't. So that was uh, that was like two years ago now that happened. But this guy to come here from Germany, I don't think he's from Germany. <clears throat> anyway, he's gone now, so uh, he's Halifax's problem. But anyway, we're going to be on high alert around here for the next little while, <clears throat> just in case uh, that he wants to come back. Yeah, I I have a I have a stalker. Uh, actually, haven't heard from him for a while. Uh, who's asking me that? Uh, Devin Colmore. Yeah, I had I had one uh, bother me there for a long time, but uh, it's been four or five months since I heard from them now. <clears throat> Bring a dog in. You know what? Can't have a dog here because of the raccoons. Yeah. Maybe it's time to pull the plug. I think it's too late for that now, uh, Jay, because uh, I've been into this too long now. I've been at this 21 years, but I've uh, been on YouTube now since 2009. And uh, so... Uh, well, you know, I didn't report it because I wanted to give the guy the benefit of the doubt. And, uh, 
he didn't do anything, no criminal activity. He didn't do anything against me or threaten me in any way. And in fact, when I offered them $50 at first, he didn't want to take it. And I insisted he take it. And, um, <clears throat> and I gave him, uh, 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 one of those postcards I got in a couple of pens, but he said he only wanted one pen. So he, so he gave me the other one back. But he, uh, I told him that because of COVID rules and regulations, you can't do that. I mean, look, I mean, we weren't even allowed to, to visit. I couldn't go visit my sister because I wasn't in the Antigonus bubble there. That wasn't all that long ago. I couldn't even see her for months and months. And uh, for him to come here out of the blue and think he's going to come here and visit, no way. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I was thinking, well, the ring door system, uh, that's good to have, but, you know, uh, the only problem with that is, is uh, I don't have a door that, like, the door I have there is all glass. There's no place to put the put that system in. But uh, but I mean, the cameras are going to do all right. So we're going to have I'm going to have cameras set up on all doors, and uh, and uh, these new ones are going to sur survey the yard. And they're going to be infrared, so they'll be able to pick out the people at night. So, yeah, uh, east wind. Yeah, I, and it was unnerving to me. You know, uh, uh, I was kind of shook up about it, and um, I just say, we know. I hope he, he get on the bus and doesn't come back, you know, but I didn't have time to wait around for the bus because I had I had a meeting I had to attend to anyway, so yeah, well I won't be dealing with it again. Uh, uh, yeah, this is Jay Kramer. I won't have I won't be dealing with it again because I'm just gonna pick up the phone and call the police. And because uh, he's, you know, I mean, I imagine I said, I told him, I said, uh, I am surprised you weren't checked hitchhiking. He said, What do you mean? I said, Well, he said, It's not against the law. I said, Well, yeah, it is. <laughs> hitchhiking, hitchhiking is against the law here in the province of Nova Scotia. It's in the, it's in the Motor Vehicle Act. You may not be soliciting rides. And, um, I'm surprised that uh, they didn't come along and see you hitchhiking and check check you. So you're lucky that way. I'm still baffled how he get in this country and, and get into our province. So we must have snuck in here somehow. <clears throat> yeah. Anyway, that's all I wanted to come on about was to, just to say that I give you guys a heads up what was going on here. And uh, if you like my RCMP outfit there in the wall, <laughs> that was sent to me uh, by friends in Saskatchewan. And uh, they thought maybe we could put that on the raccoon. I said, I'm not putting that on the raccoon. So I have it hanging on the wall as a display. But <laughs> yeah, like even my friends, uh, like John Paul, um, like I have a lot of friends here now, and they're going to come out here. Um, they usually give me a call, and kind of like I had a lady here last night on YouTube asked me if she can, if she and her son can come out and see the raccoons again. Well, they were here a couple of summers ago. But like I told her, I said, you can come. I said, but I can't guarantee you're going to see them because lately um, they've been a uh, little, uh, I don't know where they're going, but 
I think what they're doing now, they're scavenging in the woods for different foods. And, and uh, once it gets a lot colder, there'll be more coming to, to fill up for the winter. And that's what happened last year. But uh, last summer, I had a lot of babies. I had, my God, I had 14, 15 babies here at once. And that's why when I put that video out November 3rd, the mob video, that's why they're all on top of me because they were used to me all summer long. And uh, they were climbing up and top of me and everything. I don't think I'll see make another video like that again. I can't see them, uh, especially this, well, I got... Scooter will jump on you, and, and Buddy, they're both the only two. The rest will kind of keep their distance. And no sign of Ben for the last few days. Um, Scooter's been here. Uh, Sammy's been here. And, uh, and Rusty's been here the last few days. And uh, But the other ones, uh, I don't know what's going on. I put my trail cam on the other night, and um, I only had one come up, and he left the hot dogs, and the the Blue Jays ate all the hot dogs. They cleaned them right up. Yeah. They won't make patrols out here, John D. <laughs> I mean, they're, they're, they're slack. I mean, uh, I used to work for them, and they're, yeah, they're pretty slack. <clears throat> uh, okay, Skunk Age, the scat of wild raccoons have the worm in them, but I buy special medication from the vet, and what I do with these guys here, each one gets a small piece of hot dog with a pill in it, and that, that kills the worm, and... Um, and it's expensive to do because the pills are very expensive. And uh, but I do I do it for each one. And uh, and that's usually do that about uh, once every six weeks. I can do that. So I don't I don't worry about that. But you know, John, they don't uh, they don't poop up here in the deck, and they don't even poop on my property because when I'm cutting my grass. I never see one defecation anywhere. Even when I walk in the woods uh, to go down and check the graveyard, I don't find any. So wherever they do it, they don't do it in my property. But in order for me to get infected, I have to pick the poop up in my hands and touch my mouth or something, you know, afterwards, and I could pick it up that way. But I'm not going to, I don't bend over and pick up poop. Uh, who does? I don't. <clears throat> what if it comes back in Big Ben costume? <laughs> Some of you guys are funny. <laughs> uh, so anyway, uh, yeah, thank you, uh, for saying that um, uh, Ken Muckleberry is it okay no I'll tell you Ken there's a reason for that um, uh, I get too much stuff so so bad that it's piled up in my shed out there because I got no room for it. And uh, it's nice, you know, it's a nice gesture. You want to do something like that, you know. And, um, but no, I just, I have too much stuff that, that comes in. I was a box out in my car there now. Now do you remind me, I have a box that come in from Illinois. Um, no idea what's in it, but I mean, I, uh, but I get too much stuff laying in here. <laughs> but anyway, I am going to, uh, I have to meet with Ryan. We're going to do some more video on the property, so I have to be outside for that. 
and uh, he's going to do a couple more drone footages. And uh, I thought I was going to narrate the um, the the video, but they thought it'd be a better idea if one of them did it, and um, and then they're going to have me doing uh, sort of like a rundown of my life uh, in the background. And then they're going to, like, the video's coming along. I watched it. I like the fact that uh, one part of the video, you think that was the raccoon coming out of the woods. And uh, I saw it this morning. And uh, the camera, they had to use a special camera that follows the raccoon trail. And he was going, he was peeking around the tree, looking up at the deck. And then he, and he was walking up the trail and he get up the steps but I said to the boys after, I said, you know, I said, we kind of made a mistake there. You should have had me sitting at the bench and holding a hot dog out and have the camera come right up to the hot dog. They said, yes, that would have been better. So we're all thinking, well, it's still in the production stages, so we might still do that yet. So we'll see what happens. So I'm expecting Ryan out here shortly with his drones again. They're going to do a a footage of my road and turning in the driveway and and going up the steps so that's what they're going to do Canadian ladies are better looking than the ones we have here in the US I don't know you the US got a lot of beautiful women down there I um, all kinds of them I, I, I speak to them all the time on Facebook. I got a lot of a lot of my Facebook people are from the states, and uh, my my moderators that I have, they're all fine looking women. But I'll tell you though, although we have nice women around here, <laughs> they're they're not nice inside. Uh, it's great to be good looking, but if you don't have a kind heart and uh, a nice personality all this part doesn't mean nothing to me you can keep it but uh i like somebody that's honest and uh sincere you know that's what i look for in a woman anyway uh i think i'll sign off for now and uh been a while since i did a live one uh, we're going to have uh, the boys are looking at i think tuesday we're going to have a live feed 24-7 on my deck. And uh, so I, you'll be you see me filming and feeding the raccoons. And then when I'm not there, you'll see what raccoons come afterwards. And uh, also it will focus in on the raccoons coming up the path. And so it's going to be out there. At, at the deck all times and uh, we're going to keep it there until when they go to hibernate we're going to take it down so you'll see me out cleaning the deck off and um, and changing the water and scrubbing the buckets you'll see all that what I do through the day here so anyway um, and if I'm out there I'll give the camera away but it's something like what my uh, my buddy has um uh, Mike McGraw for the cat shelter. They have three cameras 24 seven in the cat shelter and uh, they went one outside and two inside. So we're just going to have the one on the deck. So that'll be interesting. And we, we thought we'd do that. So anyway, Friday afternoon, uh, my website guys and I were all going to get together at the thistle and we're all going to have a little lunch together and, and uh, have a good have a good old time together for ourselves. Hugs to Connor and Charlotte. Yeah, Tammy. Well, I would have hugged her, but she took off. <laughs> I don't know why she uh, she she. That was surprised to see her there by herself. So thank you very much for coming on here, and we got seven hundred ninety-two people. Holy smoke! <clears throat> They were asking me what I needed for a trademark uh, line. And I said, why don't you use holy smoke? Because <laughs> that's what I say all the time. So 
they're going to implement that in my uh, website. So, so now the, the you Canadian people are wondering why uh, when you buy stuff off that internet, you got to realize I have no control over that. That was set up by my website guys, and they have a special company that makes all this stuff. They they make it, and they ship it, and they do the whole thing, and I. I get a percentage of the sale to help out the raccoons here. And uh, but it's, it's all in U.S. funds. Now, you guys in the United States, it's okay for you guys because it's in your funds. But when the Canadian people order it, um, for example, say if an item is worth $100, they got to pay 126 and change, uh, the difference in the money. So anyway... Uh, we can't do anything about that for now, but they're going to look into it. We are talking about that this morning. They're going to look into it, see if the, the Canadian people can buy it in Canadian funds. But right, for right now, we can only deal with uh, the U.S. because I think it's the U.S. company that's doing it. So, But uh, I was surprised at the, the things they had on there. In fact, I'm going to order some stuff myself. Uh, I want to get a couple of more T-shirts for me, and uh, and I have to pay the U.S. funds, so I'm not getting the T-shirt for free. <laughs> I got to do it too. They got the old credit card and and uh, and buy them the same way as you do, you guys do. But I I'd like to have a a pair of those pants, sweatpants, but they wouldn't have a size to fit me. You gotta have you gotta have. <laughs> Big waistband. I don't think they make them my size. Now, this little shirt here, uh, a fellow in Taiwan gave me this, and it's so comfortable to wear. I've had it now for a couple of years. I wear it a lot, and um, it's uh, it that doesn't fit you tight, and you can stretch it. You know, it's a nice material, and uh, it fit me to a T. So. But uh, anyway, that's the one I had on when I was doing my TV interview for uh, Ben Mulroney in Toronto uh, with, the C with CTV, I think it was. And uh, that, this is the shirt I had on. Anyway, 765 people. Thank you very much for watching. And I've been on here, oh, my God, 37 minutes. I sure have the gift to gab, that's for sure. And... Um, I like hearing from you guys. You've seen all these things come up. Uh, yeah. Yeah. What's her name there? The stork. Um, I noticed a difference in the sizes between the United States and Canada. Um, like we go small, medium, large, 2X, 3X. And, and uh, some of the sizes down there are like in numbers, like six, seven, eight, and uh, up here it's just small, medium, you know, small, medium, large, and of course I I, t I take a big shirt. My I do three X for a T-shirt, and it, it's hard to get three X. But I I made sure that the uh, you can get them in on my site because I mean I I have to wear them so they have to have the three X in that size because three X it's uh. It, I don't like a T-shirt that fits tight, you know. It just binds me up. Yeah. Colorado loves me. Stephen O'Hara, how are you? Niska Melchione. My God, some of these Miss Melchione. You like the clothes on my site? Well, that's great. I do, too. I like them. Hello from Mississippi. Amy, Amy Newsom, Laura Baker, and uh, Johnson Tank, Jennifer Asbury, Sally Cotto from West Virginia. Creepy stuff. That's a good. Uh, let's have a meet and greet with all your fans, and we'll feed raccoons. <laughs> Jill, there you are. Now Jill is my moderator. You'll see a little. Uh, her name's in purple, and she has a little. Um, wrench there. 
<clears throat> so Jill said she lost a pile of weight. She got herself a nice snowblower the other day. Yeah. Hello there, Miss D, I'll say. <laughs> She's a moderator too. And uh and uh, of course Trucker John and they've been doing really good. Uh, and they're and the rest of too, I Irene Vetrano. I see you on there a lot, uh doing stuff for me. Yeah. You're having a good laugh, are you hell on heels? Good. <clears throat> I got to do a three-way with you guys on the, not a three-way get together, but we talk three, three of them video together. So, which is good fun. Yeah. So maybe if I can get uh, hell on heels to learn how to sit in front of the camera properly and I, I don't see from here. <laughs> <laughs> When I feed the raccoons cheeseburgers, <laughs> uh, no, Niska, I know. <laughs> uh, first of all, the expense. <laughs> it's expensive. Uh, no, we. Uh, I do some macaroni dishes. In fact, I might one. I might make one today. I do hamburger helper. And cook that up, and I put them in little dishes, and they eat it all up. And I got some corn there now. I'm going to put corn out tonight in, in separate bowls. Uh, raccoons like corn. It's a natural food to them, for them. I don't like corn. The only the only vegetable I eat is peas, carrots, potato. That's it. Nothing else. And I, and I I'll eat fish and chips as uh, like a fish that's done really good in batter and cook well. I like that, but other than any other fish, lobster, yeah, couldn't be bothered. But this guy in the island, he cooked the fish the right way I like it, and so does, so does the thistle. They cook it the way I like it, too. But most places, it's not cooked enough. You know, I, I told one girl there, uh, I said, uh, I said, I, I like my fish laying flat in the plate, not with the tail going like this. So, <laughs> Hello from Germany. How are you? I see you there. Dublin, Ireland. Hi, Rosie. I have uh, two ladies in Dublin that I speak to on um, on uh, Facebook all the time. And uh, Jane, Jane is one. She lives in the... Uh, Lola, Jane and Lola, they're both from Dublin. Yeah, I love fish and chips too. And uh, these guys here, they made the homemade fries. I eh? like it's none of the the bag. You know how the restaurants buy a bag of fries and dump it in. You know, it's all pre-done, and these make they make their own. So I got a I got a copy of the. Uh, of their menu I took home with me, so I'm gonna next time I go over, I'm gonna drop in again. Jill, I know she's your best friend. You even, you even got together and visited. And then you made the mistake of calling me and and uh, and she lost all her her data. <clears throat> well all she had to do was have me call her back and don't cross me in and call the states. You make the best fish and chips, do you, Miss D? All right. I'll have to test it out. You're supposed to take me to uh, a Bruins game. We'll have fish and chips before we go there. Yeah. Uh, is the story behind me being a Bruin fan because I'm in Canada? I'll tell you, this box behind me, He's the reason I'm a Bruin fan. <clears throat> this guy here, <clears throat> I followed him the time he was a rookie, Bobby Orr. And somebody sent me this. This is vintage. And uh, 
person that sent me this, this was a big deal getting this. I mean, that that's that's not plastic. That's real clothes he's got on. And it's got the whole story about him and everything. But Bobby Orr got me into that. So that tells you how old I am. He was, you know, he was playing a long time. So, um, yeah, I've been in, I've been into Boston Bruins and I've got everything Bruins in my bedroom, as you see. And uh, I got a statue of Brad Marchand up in my living room. But I've been to a game once. Uh, that was back, in, well, must be about 15 years ago. And I went to the old uh, TD, the, the old gardens before it became TD Gardens. And uh, and my sweater that's hanging on the wall in my bedroom, That's I got that at the gardens. <clears throat> but I was always, uh, I was always a, a Boston Bruins fan, and uh, when we won the cup that year, I have a, I have a, a replica cup from 2011 when they won the cup that year. With they had Tim, uh, what's his last name? The goalie Tim. I can't think of his name offhand, but he uh, Tim Thomas. He was playing goal in, and he won the cup for them. And what they do? They trade him next year. That made sense, didn't it? You got a good goalie. You win the cup, what do you do? You bounce him. But the, the goalie that's not winning for you, he's still there. And they bounce the backup guy, which I thought was better than uh, one we got now. But <clears throat> you got an autograph picture. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Greetings from North Western Ontario. Oh, Maple Leaf. <laughs> You're a Maple Leaf fan. Yeah. Horstown, PA. Robert Ziegler. Gene. You're right there in Boston, are you, Gene? Hello from London. Look at this now. Uh, ghost Hunters. What do you mean I have an active and credit for an active imagination, ghost hunter? <laughs> yeah, they will find a new Tim Thomas. Well, I hope they do. Because <laughs> I'm not impressed with Tuka Rask. I didn't like what he did there the year before at the, in the playoffs. He got on the plane and went home and left uh, – Left the backup goalie to carry the load, and uh, of course we lost. And uh, I would have, I would have penalized him for that. But it was right at the height of COVID. He wanted to be home with his family at the time. So. Greetings from Brazil. I have a, a guy in Brazil that I talk to all the time. His mom and I were best friends on here. And she passed away a number of years ago. Brian's his name. He knows him. If he's on, he'll know what I mean. So. Helen Hills, you're not from Massachusetts. You're from Boston. <laughs> you're from Bast? Yes, I know it's in Massachusetts. My aunt and uncle lived in Quincy. So uh, they used to come up every summer from there. My sister went down and stayed with them for a few times. So we have a lot of relatives that live in. Uh, I have a, another uncle, a great uncle, that uh, he was a uh, harbor police in New York City. <clears throat> yeah. No, I, I have I have autographs of Bobby Orr. I have I have all kinds there. Jack Mark, is it? Okay. Yeah, no, I got lots of autographs. I even got one of Don Cherry. Yeah. And, of course, I got Brad Marsh on. He only lives, he lives here in Halifax in the summertime. That's, he's from here. You should leave now. Don't be late for the meeting. Yeah, I know. You're telling me to get off. All right. Yeah, it's 50 minutes. Yeah. Well, Ryan will ring the doorbell. 
unless he's out there flying already. Well, anyway, I'm going to go and, uh, and I'll talk to you guys again. And uh, hopefully I'll have more people and more raccoons tonight to show you. So I'm going to end the stream here now and we shall talk again. See you later, people. And thanks for subscribing to me. I really appreciate it. And we're, we're all, I think we might be at, I think we're almost $4.99. I figured a couple of weeks we'll have the half million mark. And I'll be, I'll be happy with that. And after that, I don't care where it goes from there. I mean, we get that half million mark. That's a big step. So anyway, thanks for watching, people. And we shall uh, see you later. Bye-bye.